trusting in the Lord doesn't mean our life will be perfect, but it does mean that He will give us the courage to face whatever comes our way. Trusting in the Lord means that we can lean on Him, knowing He won't let us down. It means that when things get tough and we feel like giving up, God is there to help us. Because of this, we can face even the most difficult challenges with peace of mind and a confident spirit. Here are some ways you can trust in the Lord at any time, no matter what your circumstances may be. Focus on the positives. God always has a plan for us, even if we don't always understand what it is. Instead of worrying about what the future may bring, focus on the positives that the Lord has put in your life. Take time to reflect on all the things you are grateful for and the ways God has been present in your life. Ask for guidance. Our lives can take many different paths. Although we have a say in our future, we don't always know which way to go. When we face a difficult situation, ask for guidance from the Lord. Tell Him what you are faced with, and ask for help. Trust that He has a plan for your life, and that plan is good. Even if you don't immediately understand the reasons for a certain situation, know that there is a reason for it. Trust that He has your best interest at heart. Trust that He will give you the strength to make the right decision. Lean on others. We can't do everything on our own. While we should rely on God, we also need to reach out to other people. Ask for help when you need it, and don't be afraid to lean on your friends and family. They want to help, and they care about you. When you are struggling with a situation, it is often helpful to talk to someone about it. You don't have to deal with it alone. Remember that God doesn't give you more than you can handle. It's easy to let fear and worry consume you when you are faced with a challenge. You may be worried about a specific situation or feel overwhelmed by a larger problem you can't solve. Remember that God doesn't give you more than you can handle. He will fight for you in your relationship when things get tough. He will be there to support you and lift you up when you are feeling down. He will give you the strength you need to get through any situation. Turn to scripture when you feel apprehension. When you are facing a difficult situation and you feel apprehension, turn to scripture. There are many verses in the Bible that provide comfort and reassurance when we need it most. Psalm 91 verse 2 says, My refuge and fortress, my God in whom I trust. Trust that God will protect you and give you what you need. Trusting in the Lord doesn't mean that you don't have to try, but it does mean that you have to know when it is time to let go. You have to know that sometimes the outcome of a situation is out of your control. This doesn't mean that you are a failure, it means that you are human. When you trust in the Lord, you are placing all of your trust in Him. You are letting go of all the worries and fears you have, knowing that they will all be taken care of. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew 3 verses 1 to 12. Glory to you, O Lord! John the Baptist appeared, preaching in the desert of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, Make straight his paths. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. At that time Jerusalem, all Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, 
Who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance. But the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What does it mean to repent and prepare for the kingdom of heaven? John the Baptist is best known for his message about repentance and the coming of the kingdom of heaven. He said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 3 verse 2 In other words, John called people to turn away from their sinful lives and instead prepare themselves for God's reign on earth. In this discussion, we deliberate what it means to repent and how we can prepare ourselves for God's kingdom here on earth. Why is repentance important? Repentance and the recognition of sin in our lives is the first step towards preparing ourselves for the kingdom of heaven. As we've seen, repentance is the process of changing our hearts so that they are no longer controlled by sin. In other words, repentance is the process of purifying our hearts. It is important to repent because our sinful hearts keep us from knowing and loving God. Sin separates us from God and leads us to live a life that does not reflect the goodness of God. Once we recognize the sin in our hearts, we can repent and purify our hearts. As we do so, we draw closer to God and our hearts become more like His. Once we have purified our hearts, we are ready to enter the kingdom of heaven and experience the goodness of God. How can we repent? As we've seen, repentance is the process of purifying our hearts. Since our hearts are the seat of our emotions, repentance is primarily an emotional process. The Holy Spirit will help us purify our hearts but we must let him do so. We must be open to the Holy Spirit and let him guide us as we experience the emotions of repentance. What does this look like in practice? We must experience grief and sorrow for our sins. Grief and sorrow are the emotional consequences of sin in our lives. We must experience these emotions so that they can be purged from our hearts. Sin imprisons us in the darkness of our own selfishness, and sorrow is the way out of that prison. When we experience sorrow for our sins, we open the door for the Holy Spirit to give us freedom. We must acknowledge the falseness of our sinful lives so that we can walk away from them. We must stop pretending that everything is fine when it isn't. We must acknowledge the reality of our sinful hearts so that we can change them. We must let go of our sinful identities so that the Holy Spirit can give us new ones. When we experience this, we realize that we can no longer be who we were before. New identities allow us to walk away from our sinful pasts and towards the kingdom of heaven. What does it mean to prepare for the kingdom of heaven? When we repent of our sins, we prepare ourselves for the kingdom of heaven. This is because our repentance allows us to see the goodness of God. As we repent, we experience the Holy Spirit as He begins to guide us out of the darkness of our sinful pasts. The more we walk with the Holy Spirit, 
the more clearly we see God's goodness in our lives. Eventually, the goodness of God becomes so clear to us that we can no longer deny that it exists. As the Gospel of John says, whoever has seen me has seen the Father, John 14 verse 9. When we are able to see God's goodness, we have prepared ourselves for the kingdom of heaven. We also prepare ourselves for the kingdom of heaven when we begin to walk in the goodness of God. As we walk in the goodness of God, we reflect the goodness of God. The more we walk in the goodness of God, the more clearly we see God's goodness in the world around us. The more we walk in the goodness of God, the more we prepare ourselves for the kingdom of heaven. As we've seen, repentance is the process of purifying our hearts so that we can enter the kingdom of heaven. It is important to repent because our sinful hearts keep us from knowing and loving God. How can we repent? We must experience grief and sorrow for our sins. We must acknowledge the falseness of our sinful lives. We must let go of our sinful identities. We must walk in the goodness of God. When we repent, we prepare ourselves for the kingdom of heaven. Short Prayer of Repentance I ask you, O Most Holy Trinity, to spread the fire of your merciful love in this heart that is so cold, to enlighten this dark mind with the light of the sun, who alone is gracious all and all the truth in it. Have mercy on me, most merciful God, do not save my sins and my transgressions, but in your mercy forgive me again and give me the grace to serve you now in faithfulness and truth. Amen.